While there are many rock stars who have fallouts with their bands and later reunite, there have been many instances where rockers have been fired from their bands and left on such bad terms that they never reunited or stayed away for decades after the turmoil. Here are a couple of rock stars who were fired from bands. If you enjoyed the video, please like the video and subscribe to the channel for more videos just like this one. Before Jimi Hendrix carved his way into music history with his innovative playing and changing the world of guitar unlike anyone else, one of Hendrix's first gigs was being a rhythm guitar player in Little Richard's band in the early 60s. According to Little Richard, he fired Hendrix from his band in 1965 because Hendrix was often late to get on the bus, he didn't dress properly, and he let his love of women distract him from the music. Fortunately, Hendrix's departure from the band didn't really hinder him because he was only with Little Richard's band for a year and Hendrix later praised Richard for giving him the opportunity and said he left on good terms. Before Lemmy Kilmeister made it big with Motorhead, Lemmy was a part of the band Hawkwind from 1971 to 1975 before getting fired in 1975 after being arrested at the Canadian border for drug possession. While touring North America, Lemmy was detained for possession of amphetamines and jailed him overnight. Fortunately, Lemmy was released the next day without charge, but the band and management were concerned with the arrest and thought it was best to part ways with him. Although Lemmy returned to Hawkwind the next day, the band fired him after their next show, citing his erratic behavior and saying that his arrest could affect the band's chance of getting back into the US. Luckily for Lemmy, he saw his release from the band as an opportunity to start his own band and co-founded the incredibly successful band Motorhead the same year. In 1983, Dave Mustaine was fired from Metallica because of his alcoholism and drug abuse and his disagreements between founding members James Hetfield and Lars Ulrich. Mustaine was fired in April 1983 after the band had driven to New York to record their debut album but was sent back to Los Angeles on a one-way bus ticket and told to never come back. From there, Mustaine went on to form Megadeth, vowing to make a band that was bigger, better, and faster than Metallica. Fortunately, both bands would achieve massive success, and more recently, Dave has admitted that he does have a better relationship with James and Lars, even though it's not perfect. His only regret about his departure from Metallica was that the band used his music on the first three albums. All of the solos on the first record are his, but they were only performed by Kirk Hammett. He did say that he does receive royalties from the songs, even though Kirk received his royalties for many years. However, Mustaine realizes that it's only money at the end of the day, and he's put the past behind him. Steven Adler, the original drummer of Guns N' Roses, was fired over his drug addiction in 1990. Since his release from the band, he has played in other bands, yet never exactly had the same success in Guns N' Roses. However, besides his reunion with the band during their Rock and Roll Hall of Fame induction in 2012, and reunion with the band for a few shows during the band's tour in 2016, Adler has been unsuccessful in rejoining the band. He has repeatedly said in interviews that he would love to play with the band again and has asked fans to pray for a full-time offer. In 1996, Sammy Hager was fired from Van Halen after experiencing personal problems with Eddie Van Halen and creative differences with the band. Sammy also said that Eddie Van Halen's drug and alcohol addictions had a negative impact on him emotionally and physically. After this, the band would experience a momentary decline for 10 years until Van Halen returned with David Lee Roth in 2006. Michael Anthony, the bassist for Van Halen, left the band after the 2004 reunion tour with Sammy Hager, yet denies being fired. However, this has been a topic of debate as Eddie Van Halen said that Michael Anthony left the band by choice, but Michael Anthony said, that Eddie pushed him out. Anthony was especially hurt given that he also contributed backing vocals and helped co-write many of Van Halen's original songs. Michael also believes that he was pushed out to make way for Eddie's son Wolfgang who ended up taking Michael's spot on bass and never reconnected with the band. In addition to that, Michael never reconciled with Eddie Van Halen before Eddie's death in 2020 
and says he regrets not taking the chance to make things right. Fortunately, in 2023, Anthony did reconnect with Eddie's son Wolfgang and was able to get closure with him and make peace after what happened. The complicated relationship between Scott Wheeland and his band Stone Temple Pilots went through its fair share of up and downs as Scott and the band often had issues stemming from Scott's substance abuse. Scott would leave and rejoin the band numerous times throughout the band's career in the 90s and early 2000s. However, the band would eventually reach the last straw with Scott in 2012, which eventually led to the band firing Scott Wheeland in 2013. At the time, the band said that they fired Wheeland because he embarked on a solo tour without telling the band in 2013, and the Stone Temple Pilots replaced Wheeland with Chester Bennington. This decision would infuriate Wheeland as he claimed he founded the band and argued that they couldn't go on without him, claiming that he was never fired. Unfortunately, these events would later contribute to Scott's downward spiral as he was found dead on his tour bus two years later in 2015, ending any possibility of a reunion. While Don Felder gave the Eagles its biggest hit in 1976 with Hotel California, in 2001, the rest of the band decided on letting Felder go, agreeing to never work with him again. Don was fired from the Eagles after he alleged that Don Henley and Glenn Fry pressured him into signing an agreement that gave them a larger share of the band's profits. Felder claimed that the band had previously split profits equally, but that Henley and Fry wanted to receive a higher percentage from the 1994 Hell Freezes Over tour onward. Felder responded to his firing by filing lawsuits against the band, seeking $50 million in damages. Henley and Fry countersued Felder, alleging that he had written and tried to sell the rights to a tell-all book about the secrets and turmoil from the band's past. Unfortunately, Don Felder has not reunited with the Eagles, and after those legal and financial disputes, the case was finally settled out of court in 2007. Felder has also said that he was only in contact with Glenn Fry or Don Henley through their attorneys and says he has only kept in contact with former members Bernie Ledden and the late Randy Meisner. He also expressed regret about not reconciling with Glenn Fry before his death in 2016 and felt unbelievable sorrow after hearing the news of his passing. After reaching huge success with Black Sabbath in the 70s, Ozzy Osbourne was fired from Sabbath in 1979 due to his alcohol and extensive drug use, which made him difficult to work with and caused the band to struggle musically. The rest of the band claimed that Ozzy's behavior was becoming much more erratic due to his addictions, and Tony Iommi chose to replace him with Ronnie James Dio. At the time, Ozzy was very hurt by Tony's decision to fire him and called the band hypocrites because they were all high on drugs all the time, just like him. Fortunately, Ozzy was able to land on his feet and embark on an incredibly successful and lucrative solo career, and he was able to later reunite with Sabbath on multiple occasions with their first full reunion in 1997. However, decades after his release from Sabbath, and despite all the success he achieved on his own, Ozzy claims that he never got over being fired from Sabbath in 1979 and said that he never listened to the band's music with Ronnie James Dio, saying that it was too personal for him. Luckily, unlike many of the artists on this list, he was able to reconcile with all of his bandmates and still talks to his Sabbath bandmates till this day. As someone who has had a tumultuous career with Fleetwood Mac, Guitarist Lindsey Buckingham has had a rocky relationship with all of the members of the band at one point or another and has especially had a difficult time dealing with Stevie Nicks. The relationship between Stevie Nicks and Buckingham goes all the way back to the early 70s as the two were in a relationship together and later joined Fleetwood Mac in 1974. For a long time, the two helped write the band's biggest songs and while they broke up romantically, maintained a healthy work relationship. However, Lindsay would first leave in 1987, saying that between his ambition to embark on a solo career and his strained relationship with the rest of the band, 
he thought it would be best to leave. Lindsay would rejoin the band again in 1993 to perform at President Bill Clinton's inauguration, and again in 1997, where he would stay with the band until 2018. In 2018, as a decision made by all of the current members of Fleetwood Mac, it was agreed upon that Lindsay had to leave the band and that he was being fired. The reason for his dismissal from the band came from a disagreement between Lindsay and the band about their upcoming world tour that was to take place in 2019. Buckingham would be replaced by Mike Campbell and Neil Finn, and Buckingham later gave an interview to Rolling Stone magazine where he said he considered the band to be toxic and removed himself. In addition to that, he would file a lawsuit against the band and claim wrongful termination. However, Stevie Nicks claimed that she didn't ask for Buckingham to be removed, yet also spoke of the fact that she was tired of dealing with him for so many years, and now she was done. In terms of Lindsay's relationship with the band now, Mick Fleetwood admitted that he reconciled with Buckingham and says he's open to a reunion. As for late member Christine McVie, it said that they were both in contact prior to her death and Buckingham was in attendance at her funeral. When it comes to Buckingham's relationship with Stevie Nicks, the two are still on bad terms, yet put their bad blood behind them and spoke publicly for the first time in years at Christine's funeral. Buckingham still hopes for a farewell reunion with his bandmates, but he understands that at this point, it's very unlikely. In April 1968, Sid Barrett was fired from Pink Floyd due to his declining mental health and use of psychedelic drugs. At the time, it was unknown what exactly was wrong with Sid, but at only 22 years old, the rest of his bandmates knew that Sid needed help and that he needed to be let go from the band. Of course, his bandmates felt bad about letting Sid go, and avoided initially telling him he was out, and instead let him sit in the reception area during recording sessions and left him out of gigs. When Sid realized he was out, it was through an official statement made by the band, and his music career only went down from there. Sid tried to embark on solo projects, but later quit music altogether after reaching little success. His departure from the band is quite sad, because Sid was an innovative and sophisticated artist, but lost himself somewhere along the way. All of the members of Pink Floyd have expressed their sadness and regret because of how Sid ended up neglecting his health, and Sid's family told the band that they believed it would be best for them to stay away from him. When Sid passed away at age 60 in 2006, none of the band members were allowed at his funeral, and Sid's decline and eventual departure still remains a stain in the band's history. One of the most famous cases of a musician being fired from a band is Pete Best's release from the Beatles. As the story goes, Pete was fired because band members John Lennon, Paul McCartney, and George Harrison believed his drumming skills were lacking and that he couldn't keep time well. To Pete's surprise, he was replaced by his good friend Ringo Starr, and it seemed like after that, almost overnight, the Beatles were an international sensation that he missed out on. While he missed out on the Beatles' success, Pete's still proud of being able to say he played drums on the band's earliest recordings and said he later understood why the band might have believed he didn't mesh well with them. Fortunately, Pete has played in other bands and maintains a positive outlook till this day. As a founding member of the Rolling Stones, the firing of Brian Jones from the Stones is perhaps the most well-known and significant in music history. At the time, Brian started missing studio sessions, using drugs and alcohol to no end, and just becoming completely non-existent at the end of his time with the band. He was arrested for cannabis possession in 1967 and placed on probation, and Jones felt isolated and unhappy with the rest of the band. He felt like he was being slowly pushed out, by Keith Richards and Mick Jagger as the two had become the main songwriting force in the band's music and were reaching new heights without his involvement. Brian Jones would be fired in June 1969 and on July 3rd, 1969, had died from drowning in the swimming pool at his home at just 27 years old. There are still many unknown factors about Jones' death that are still being debated 
including the fact that Jones was high on drugs and found completely submerged at the bottom of his swimming pool. And many also believe that Jones could have been murdered, as the songwriter was about to embark on a solo career that would have seen many Rolling Stones songs being released on his own after leaving the band. And it's also been theorized that it was construction worker Frank Thorogood, who had been living at Jones's house, killed Jones over a financial dispute regarding renovations at his home, and that he confessed the murder to Tom Keylock, who worked for the Stones. But take this with a grain of salt, as Jones's death was classified as death by misadventure, and no new evidence has come about, even over 50 years after his death. Anyways, what firing here surprised you the most? Let us know in the comments down below, and like the video if you enjoyed it, and subscribe to the channel for more videos just like this one. And until next time, I'll see you guys later.